Okay, we're going to look at the chain rule from a different perspective using some different notation here. Uh, so we'll be finding the derivative of uh, dy dx, derivative of y with respect to x. Except we're going to break it up into the product of two different derivatives, where our first function will be y and we'll differentiate with respect to u. Our second derivative will be u and we'll differentiate that with respect to x. That means the y function will be written in terms of u and the u function will be written in terms of x. And we'll just show that doing a derivative this way, which is a chain rule situation, uh, is the same way the same result as doing the um, chain rule um, the traditional way. Um, so we're just going to let, um, here is f of u is equal to u cubed. We're going to let that be y equals u cubed. And then this is u of g of x, just showing that g of x is the inner function. Right here, this is f of g of x prime. So the g of x is the inner function. So therefore, we're just going to let u equal x squared plus 1. <clears throat> so the first half of my derivative is dy du. So here's my y function, which is in terms of u. So we're going to do dy du is equal to 3u squared. And du dx is equal to 2x. So therefore, dy dx, according to this model here, is equal to dy du times du dx. So dy du is 3u squared du dx is 2x. But notice our uh, derivative is in terms of x, so therefore we'd want all of this to be in terms of x. So let's just rewrite it as 3. u squared is x squared plus 1 times 2x. This is squared. So I'm just going to multiply the 2x and the 3, squeeze it in on the bottom. I get 6x x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Let's look at the derivative of this function uh, from a traditional chain rule uh, format, where this is f of u is equal to u cubed and u is equal to x squared plus 1. So I'm just going to write this all in, just write f all in terms of x. So this would be f of g of x is equal to x squared plus 1 cubed. So I just took x squared plus 1, plugged it in where I saw u. So I'm just going to let this be y. So therefore, dy dx will be equal to the derivative of the outer piece is 3. Rewrite the inner piece, subtract 1 from the exponent, multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. I'm just going to multiply the 2x and the 3. You get 6x, x squared plus 1 quantity squared. So notice that we get the same result regardless of what method we use. We're just trying out a different method because um, it may be appealing to some of you to see it in a different way. Let's try another example. This will be a trig example. So again, we'll let the f function be equal to y. And we'll let the u function equal to 2x. So dy du is equal to the cosine of u du dx is equal to 2. So that means dy dx is equal to the product of these two functions, which is 2 cosine u. But notice that I want my function in terms of x, so therefore I'm going to replace u with 2 of x. So we get dy dx is equal to 2 cosine 2x. Two Just two more examples, except this time we're going to evaluate the derivative at a value, at negative 1. So again, we have dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. And just notice that these two du's technically, um, actually, they're not exactly the same, but they do actually cancel out. So therefore, if you cancel these two out, you're back to dy dx. Um, so that's why we're allowed to break up this derivative as um, two derivatives, excuse me, break up the derivative dy dx into two different derivatives. So this is my y function. I'm going to write it as u to the 1 half. And here's my u function. So dy du is 1 half u to the negative 1 half. du dx is equal to 3x squared minus x plus 5. So dy du is, oops. That's not the derivative of u. 
my eraser is not working. Here we go. I didn't take the derivative at all. The derivative would be 6x minus 1. So we get 1 half u to the negative 1 half times 6x minus 1. So that's dy dx, not dy du. So I get dy dx is equal to 1 half 3x squared minus x plus 5 to the negative 1 half power times 6x minus 1. And then we evaluate the derivative at negative 1. So we get 1 half 3 negative 1 squared minus negative 1 plus 5 to the negative 1 half power times 6 times negative 1 minus 1. So our derivative at negative 1 would be equal to 1 half. This is 3 plus 1 plus 5. So 3 plus 1 plus 5 times negative 6 minus 1. This is to the negative 1 half power. So this is dy dx at negative 1 is equal to 1 half. Uh, that's 9 to the negative 1 half, and this is negative 7. So 9 to the 1 half power is 3, make it negative, so that's 1 third. So we get dy dx at negative 1 is equal to uh, 1 half times 1 third times negative 7, which is negative 7 over 6. <clears throat> Probably about a couple of mistakes on that one. <coughs> So for our last example, uh, we have a squaring function and the tangent function. So we'll let y equal u squared. So dy du is 2u. du dx is secant squared x. So dy dx is 2u times secant squared x, where u is equal to tangent of x. So dy dx is equal to 2 tan x secant squared x. So I'm going to come up over here. So evaluating my derivative at pi over 4 gives me 2 times the tan of pi over 4 secant squared pi over 4. The derivative of tangent of pi over 4 is 1. The derivative of cosine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. So this is 2 over radical 2 if it's secant quantity squared. So that gives us 2 times 4 over 2. 4 over 2 is 2, so this is 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. So this is just a chain rule from a different perspective.